Hey, welcome to Well.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and I'm at my shop here in Utah Springs, Kansas, and I'm testing out a new product. Uh, now, this new product is called an Arc Pig. Here's what's amazing about it, and I'm going to have to prove it out to see if it works. Um, now, over the years, I've been able to use the, the old-fashioned, I don't know if you remember, the old Lincoln Buzz Box, and they came in several varieties. Well, I happen to have found one here to my side here that's over 40 years old. Now, that buzz box was used primarily for stick welding. And I get this question daily. Can I use my AC buzz box that was about $90 in, in 1975? Can I use that for TIG welding? Not only TIG welding, can I use it for aluminum TIG welding? And my answer until today is no, you can't. And primarily the reason is because you've got a 60 cycle machine, even if you hook up a TIG torch to it, you can't stabilize the arc. So there used to be attachments that you could buy, they were add-ons, but the add-on high frequency box was so expensive it was now into the thousands. So it didn't make a lot of sense to add that to a small machine. So now comes this thing called arc pig. And this arc pig is an attachment and the attachment is you plug it in in line with your machine and I'm going to go through the setup of this thing with a TIG torch make sure you put a valve on your TIG torch so you can turn your gas on and off and instead of scratch starting they came up with a little button and so the button has a continuous high frequency so I started going through the owner's manual uh, and it's pretty comical I, first of all I look at the shape of this thing it's pretty lightweight but on the front of the owner's manual First of all, it's, it's made in Texas, so made in America. I like that off the bat. You take a look at the tens of thousands of these little machines that were made by Lincoln Electric, all American made, and the products that you can get to add on to this are all American made, so uh, it, it, that's a plus. So, so just know that we're going to provide you all the information you need to be able to do this. So you'll see it in our show notes and uh, different postings with well.com. But take a look at the owner's manual. The first thing that I see on here is it says, it's got a picture of a rabbit, and it says, test it on human children. So we're not testing it on am animals, we're testing it on human children. So you know it's got to be safe. And so as I go into the owner's manual on the setup, there's a couple of cautions, uh, but there's one in here that's really dangerous. It says, uh, danger, welding is hot, molten metal flies everywhere, Wear lots of thick leather. Do not weld near stuff that can catch fire. Here's the one that's a, a big caution. Do not weld over flooring your wife cares about. Hmm. Okay, that could be hazardous to your health. Even ceramic tile, trust me on this. So uh, anyway, you, you can go through all this. Um, you know, the, the key to it is, can it weld aluminum? So what I'm going to do is I, I've, got, I've got a couple of pieces of aluminum here. One of them is 16 gauge. So if I want to do thin wall welding of aluminum, I want to make sure I can do thin gauge. The, the other thing is I've got eighth inch here. I've just got some junk aluminum here. The oxides are pretty heavy. I've got it pre-tacked. So let's see if it'll do that. Now, these machines, they click, you know, it, it's like a tap machine, but they'll click to amperage, click to this, to this, to this. Same, same rule applies, one amp per thousandth of thickness material. So uh, on this one, I'm going to set it, I'm at 16 gauge, I'm going to set it at about 60 amps. Um, this one here is 125 thousandths thick, I'm going to set it somewhere around 125 amps. And just know that these buzz boxes, they got the name because they do buzz. I mean, they've got a lot of copper, they're pretty robust. Uh, this, this goes on to say that you can you can use this on any AC machine. Well, if it works, and I'm, I'm gonna test it through here, if it works, man, will this open up the avenue for anybody that's got one of these in their garage. So, you know, the other thing I was thinking about out in the field, what if you got an AC generator? The, the answer is, if you have an AC generator and you're stick welding AC, you can, you can use this to go onto aluminum. So we're going to make this a series. If it works, we're going to go into, you know, some progressive uh, tests. So just know this is the first of many. Anyway, it's called the Arc Pig. Uh, we looked it up and it's about, 
I don't know, somewhere around 350 bucks. So uh, if you can find it on Google, but we'll, we'll give you some information on how to get a hold of these guys. Never heard of them before. At the same time, we we're talking about high frequency, and I had a, had a company, Westchester, call me and say, I'd like for you to test some gloves. And they said, believe it or not, these are TIG welding gloves. They're not conventional. They're not like the ones that I normally use in light leather and all that. But would you use them? Because automatically I look at it and I go, gosh, will it hold up? Uh, so I don't know. But, uh, you know, gloves are always tough to get in and out, of, especially leather if you get them wet. So I'm going to try these. Uh, and I've got the silicon rubber on here. Um, and I'll tell you whether or not I get any high frequency jumping uh, through here or if they, uh, if they melt. So uh, what I want to do is uh, I'm going to show you how to set this machine up first of all. And we'll give you a couple of different close-ups. But uh, if you look at it in line, it's pretty simple. I mean, this is the ground. You take the ground from your machine and hook it up here. And then you take another ground, you make your own little lead and, and hook it into your workpiece or your table. So that's all those two are, ground to ground to your table. That's all. Okay, then this one right here, this is nothing more than taking off your stick electrode holder and, and putting a little uh, fitting on there and tightening it on there. Okay, so now you're in line with your machine. So you can actually drag this around with you. Now you can't see it yet, but on the, uh, on the back side here, this is where I hook my TIG torch. Now I've got a double cable or a dual cable TIG torch and this cable right here, uh, it tightens on right where it says torch, um, and it's live. Now, I do, have, I do have an argon regulator over there. Instead, instead of having a, uh, a valve, I just didn't happen to have one with me at the time, but you want to put a gas valve on here so you can turn your gas on, set it at about 20 CFH. Now, I've got this little switch that comes with it, and if you'll notice, this cable comes down and eventually it comes up here and, and there's there's two little wires two little blue wires right here and it shows you it's already stripped off you just connect them and all that is is a switch so I don't have a foot control so I've got to set the machine exactly uh, the amps that I want but when I hit this then you're gonna hear high frequency high frequency should come out of here now you gotta remember once you turn that machine on this, uh, this tungsten is live, so just like your stick welding, I mean, if you actually touched it while it's on, you'd try to start the arc. That's not what we want to do. We want to get close and hit that button and see if the high frequency works. So let me get my gear on, and we'll start going through a couple of tests. I'm going to disconnect the ground off the table, first of all, just so I can test it and see if the high frequency comes on when I push the button. So I'll join you in just a few minutes. Okay, so because I don't have a valve on here, I, I went over to the regulator, turned it up to about 20 CFH argon. I've got a 332 diameter tungsten. I, again, I like 2% thoriated, so that works great. I got a gas lens uh, set up on here. This button here, just so you know, uh, this is already live. This button only turns on the high frequency. So you got to set your machine. You don't have variable control. You got to set your machine as you know it and I'm on 55 amps right now. So when you start to weld, just know that the aluminum has an oxide layer. It'll have to clear off, and eventually you'll get into a clean puddle. Then you can start welding. Now, when you get to the end of your weld, you know, you don't have a foot control to back off of, so you just gotta kinda add a little extra filler and pull your, pull your arc away. It's not the cleanest, but it's not terribly bad. So for a small, low-cost setup, it's a good way to get into aluminum. So here goes.
Okay, so it, uh, it welded aluminum, it was kind of remarkable actually, and I was just thinking of some of the applications that you would use, especially on the farm, if you've got irrigation systems and you know, you've got the, your aluminum water pipes and things like that, you need to fix cracks where the cattle have walked over them. Uh, again, this is 16 gauge. I don't even have it on the lowest setting here. So 16 gauge, I could go down to probably 20 gauge, no problem at all. Again, just for uh, you know, fixing a one or two inch uh, repair on something like that, that'd work great. Now let's take it to a, a little, a little more significant. Let's just say you're you're doing a little fabrication, um, and your fabrication is a little thicker material. So I've got uh, I've got some eighth inch aluminum set up here. Um, I'm going to I'm going to set up here and. Uh, I'm going to set the machine probably at about uh, 110 amps and, and then see, see how it affects this. So let me change my machine and I'll get back to you in just a minute. Okay, well this buzz box is doing exactly what it's supposed to. It buzzes. I've set it at 115 amps, getting great clean. This is rolling up uh, remarkable. Look at this, this is just unbelievable. <laughs> this is absolutely remarkable. Um, you know, who would have thought, you know, yesterday I would have told you absolutely not, you can't use an AC, AC buzz box, you know, without attachments and they're just too cost prohibitive. Uh, now I'm doing eighth inch thick aluminum and, and you can see along the edge of the weld, you get a cleaning action. Again, it's only 60 cycles, but so what? So for general fabrication and things like that, uh, man. Uh, so let's, let's recap what I've done. Taking the AC, AC buzz box, and you know what, if you have the AC-DC, so much the better, because we're going we're gonna to get one, we're going to do the DC side next. Um, the fact that we can do 8th inch aluminum, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and try to get some of these AC generators in here and, uh, and see how well this works, because I mean, this is a game changer for our industry. Uh, again, let's recap the cost, because cost is everything. It's got to be able to do it, but uh, this little thing right here, uh, again, I don't know a lot about this company. All I know is I, I like what I see so far. So uh, it's about 350 bucks. You need about $150 worth of uh, a regulator torch with a valve on it. Um, and if you've already got the buzz box and you can find them on Craigslist and just about anywhere, so they're dirt cheap. Um, anyway, AC welding, eighth inch. You heard the buzzing, that's normal with a buzz box. That's why they have the name. So. Uh, uh, I, I give this thing an A, and uh, I'm going to continue on. And I, I want to thank everybody that uh, supplied everything to me. I got these gloves uh, with the silicon on them, and uh, heck, I just thought they would melt. But uh, actually, they're pretty quite comfortable. They're just new and different. Uh, but they are easy to get on and off, so there's a, a huge advantage in that. So I'm going to keep on using them, and uh, I'll get back with you as we get into more episodes on this. So thank you for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. Tig. To stay up with the latest TIG welding technology and education, subscribe by clicking the button below.